Uh, my name is Guy Sparrow. I was in the United States Army. My rank, uh, the highest level I went to was uh, Specialist E4. My mil military operation school was 67N20. That's a helicopter uh, rotary uh, wing mechanic. I was assigned the helicopter. My job was to maintain, fly with, be present with that helicopter at all times, and fly at combat assault missions and uh, repair the the uh, helicopter uh, as needed. I, you know, I was from the little town of Kirkland over here. You know, I'd never been anywhere other than with my father for a two-week vacation. Uh, so I, uh, I got real homesick, uh, but that doesn't make much difference, you know. You got to do what you got to do, and they're not going to let you just go just because you're homesick. Probably the one of the worst situations was uh, the enemy uh, rocketed our base, and uh, I was working on top of my helicopter when the first first and only rocket came in. But the rocket hit our ammo dump. And for the next 12 hours, 13 million pounds of ammunition blew up 250 yards away from me. And I was, I was uh, in a little foxhole. I jumped off the top of the helicopter. My door gunner and I both went into this little foxhole that we dig out, out, outside the revintment of the helicopter to uh, protect ourselves just in the event of getting rocketed. And we were in that hole there for, for the first six hours where these rounds are going off, and it was like a Walt Disney production, you know, the biggest fireworks finale you ever heard, only it just never stopped. And the smoke, the tear gas, the different rounds that were blowing up, uh, they... Uh, they uh, were pretty intense, and uh, then we could smell that my uh, helicopter had gotten hit with something, and you could smell the fuel coming out of it. And then my door gunner says to me, he says, hey, he says, you know something, the fuel dump is even closer to us than the, than the, the ammunition dump. So he made the decision we need to get out of here. We need to get as far away from where we're at as we can. I said, well, how's that going to happen? You know, we haven't had any, we haven't had any let up. You know, there's, it's just, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to dig to China. You know, I'm not trying to go up. I'm trying to go down. And uh, he says, it doesn't make any difference. The only chance we got is we got to get out of here because if the ammo dump, we're going to be, or the fuel dump goes, we'll be smothered. There won't be enough oxygen. And uh, so he started to talk me into that, and then about at that point, something hit me, and it came down, hit me on the, in the stomach, and I thought it tore my intestines out and everything else. I couldn't see. It's dark. And uh, I said, I've been hit. You just go ahead. And he says, no. He said, I'm taking you with me. And I says, well, I'll just get in your way. He says, no, you're going with me. So we took off on the run, and... You know, I wish I could have done the 100 yards in high school as I did that 100 yards, uh, but we did. And we ended up going in, getting into a mortar hole, and then we moved from there over to a bunker. Got to another bunker, and uh, I was right in the doorway of that bunker, and the, the fuel dump finally went up. And... Uh, it just picked me up. I could feel intense heat on the side of my face, and it picked my body up and threw me 50 feet down down the the uh, bunker with everybody else. And we were kind of pulling our legs and our arms away from each other, you know, to untangle ourselves. And and so, okay, let's get out of here, you know. So I go to another bunker, and. Uh, an officer sees me there. It was a real nice bunker, you know. Uh, there was water in there and a light and everything else. And he looks at me and says, you've been hit. And I said, yeah, I'm not. It isn't as bad as what it looks. I said, I'm okay. And he says, no. He said, we've got to get you over to the medic bunker. 
So I went from there, he, he put two guys along with me to, to get me over to the medic's bunker, and they dropped me off at the medic's bunker, and all of a sudden they leave. There isn't any medics in the bunker. I'm the only one in it, and all it amounted to was a hole that was dug out with a caterpillar, and uh, they put a building in it, and then they put sandbags on top of a tin roof. Well, I don't know at some point, you know, because it's 125 degrees, smoke, tear gas, everything in the air, and uh, I must have gone into shock because I, I uh, took a, a wool blanket and wrapped myself up in it, and I just must have just passed out. Next thing I knew, I hear people on top of the building. The building had been hit and collapsed on top of me, and I was buried. And people were saying, is anybody in down in here? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down here. And they said, well, we're, we're going to dig you out. I said, okay. So they got coming down, and they looked, and, and they said, whoa. He says, you got, you got a, uh, an M79 grenade round behind your back there, and it's, and it's launched. It's, it was active. And I said, well, I said, just you guys get out of here, and I'll, I'll just walk out. And so I walked out, and that was 12 hours after the initial rocket came in that I, that I came out. So that was probably the worst days, but I had other ones that rivaled that one too. You know, we, were, we got shot at a lot in the helicopters and, and uh, we'd get chased out of places. I think the thing that I would share with you is to respect monuments, you know, the, the, the memorials and the, uh, and, and the respect to the you know, veterans. You know, they've all paid a price. And uh, I, just, I just share that, you know, just show respect where it's due.